think I've mentioned this before, but whenever an episode is done, that day or two after is one of my favorite times because that's a time when there's no responsibilities, everything's completed. You have this chance to reset and be like, oh, okay, what's next? And have I wrapped up everything? Are things still running smoothly? It's like a good maintenance time. You know who's a genius? So the stuff I create, I don't consider myself a genius by any stretch of the imagination. My stuff is very mechanical, straightforward. I just put in the effort to learn the stuff. I'm not particularly creative. Meanwhile, there's certain people who put in all of that work and all of that mechanical energy and time, but are also geniuses. Bill Lertz is a genius. His style is unlike any other, and the amount of work and effort that he puts into his videos makes me feel utterly useless. <laughs> So the new Adventure Archives episode is out for everyone on Patreon. There's two scenes that I decided uh, I'm gonna take out. The first one, I don't know why I'm worried about this, but there's this joke about hipsters and yuppies. And I think any one of us could easily classify as a hipster or a yuppie. So it's kind of like making fun of yourself, but I just don't want to put it in. So I'm gonna be taking that scene out, but I'll let you see it right here. This is Base Camp Blend, oak, chocolate, and honey. Terrible. I know. It's like, if hipsters wanted to say, you know, what could we, how could we make the most hipstery outdoor coffee? Let's just add a bunch of things that don't make sense. Let's not say anything that'll offend someone. <laughs> offend well, us Thomas bought this. I bought, no, I bought this. <laughs> and at Starbucks, right? I bought this. I know, I'm just saying, and let's, Thomas not, let's is a not hipster. say something so, gen so generalizing. I, I feel like I can say something that a hipster made because I am just a hipster <laughs> living in and out. <laughs> You're what we would call a yuppie. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. <laughs> ah. This tea is good, though. Thank you, Windsor. <laughs> and the other one involves a rhyme that involves the word buck. And we don't say anything, but I don't want people to have to explain it to their kids. And man, he had some good stories. <laughs> <laughs> and some good rhymes, too. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Not kid-friendly, but <laughs> they were good. <laughs> It may or may not have evolved a buck. <laughs> <laughs> Sneeds, feed, and see, formerly Chucks. Part of me wants to say, man, just do whatever makes you happy and then don't worry about what other people say. But just the volume of responses that you can get by posting something on the internet. I don't even read comments anymore. I should probably say that I try not to read the comments. Sometimes I get curious and then I go in there and I'm like, no, I can't read these, I can't read these. <laughs> Even on here, it's kind of funny. I tell people what I think pretty much nonstop in the vlog. And then if I say anything about what's going on in reality, there's a certain group of people who will just get upset and be like, I'm not coming here for politics. I'm like, this is not politics, man. This is just real life. So I've tried to ignore certain things. And there's certain political things that I will just ignore because those I can see both sides of it. There's certain other things where I'm like, dude, how is this even a topic? Like, this is not political. This is just a humanity thing. This is just being a human. And th to ask me not to talk about it, if I made like a variety entertainment show, like Good Mythical Morning, okay? Maybe that would make sense for me not to say what I think about things. But these videos are literally me just saying what I think. So in Adventure Archives, it's not people just talking about what they think. There is aspects of that. But it makes sense to kind of just ignore a lot of things in the outside world. But in these videos where I'm literally just telling you what I think every day, I'm gonna have to tell you what I think. I can't just ignore stuff. <clears throat> Yo, this winter has been relentless. It has been 30 degrees, basically freezing temperatures for like a month now. I feel like a lot of years it's not always that cold. There's like periods where it's really cold, but it doesn't stay that cold for that long. Man, running is a tricky thing because I really don't want to do it today. But I don't think it's because I shouldn't do it. It's because it's cold. 
and I just wanna go get in the shower. But we will persevere. Also, thank you again to Andrew for sending this. Not my Andrew, a different Andrew. This has been great for the vlog. I do a little run and stuff. Man, come on. Never would have bought this myself, but this is a great little device. There's this fine line between having one tool that does a bunch of different things kind of well, and then having a bunch of tools that do different tasks really well. I could totally use my cell phone to film while I'm running, but it's just terrible to bring around. But this fits so perfectly in my hand while I'm running that it's almost like it's not there. And in this case, having the right tool for the right job is totally warranted because if I didn't have this, I wouldn't even film my running. Even a GoPro, it's like this big cube. Holding onto that's not the same as holding onto this. This is just, come on. Let's go for that run. Speaking of having the right tool, lots of times I don't get something new because I'm like, well, I have something that kind of fulfills that purpose. Before I got these wireless headphones, I was using wired headphones and every time I'd run, I'd rip the headphones out of my ear like three times. They'd keep falling out because the wire dangles. And for whatever reason, when these were announced, I was like, oh man, these are perfect. And then I didn't buy them for like a year. And that part of me that was like, oh, I don't really need these. It kind of got in my own way and I could have been using them. And it would have actually been a justified purchase, you know? It's finding that balance between not getting stuff just for the fun of it and getting stuff because you'll actually really enjoy it and really use it. of saving money on the wrong things. Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory came out in November of 2020 and I have not bought it yet. That's ridiculous, unbelievable. I was like, oh, I'm trying to save money. I'm not trying to spend all this money on games right now. I have been denying myself the unbridled joy and passion of playing a Kingdom Hearts music rhythm game. Why? Why have I been denying myself that so I could save $50? Insane in the membrane. I don't know exactly what started it, but for some reason I've just been craving hot dogs. Mm. Sorry to everyone who didn't want to eat a hot dog today and is now going to get hot dogs. And you're welcome to the hot dog industry for getting you some sales. So while we're on the topic of tools, when we shoot episodes, we use a Sony a7S III, which I'm using right now, and a Panasonic GH5. The problem that I have right now is I'd like to have two Sony cameras because then all of the footage will match exactly. The two cameras will have the exact same feature set. It'll be great. The problem is I'm hesitating right now to sell this and to sell all the lenses and get another Sony camera. And I'm not sure why. I mean, part of it is that these Sony cameras are very expensive. It's $3,500. Selling all of this stuff will get me pretty close to that, but for whatever reason, I'm also kind of getting sentimentally attached to this camera. I've just made so many good videos with it. To sell it seems almost like a sacrilege. I almost never get attached to cameras. Like as soon as it's time to sell it, man, I just sell it. But for some reason, this camera has been so reliable, so good. Well, in any case, I'm not gonna rush it because we've got all the tools we need. We don't need anything else. We don't need anything less. We're sitting very pretty. I'm just gonna let this ride for a while and then I can make decisions later, once it becomes more clear. Granted, it's not optimal because we don't have two exactly matching cameras, but nobody's complained about that. Once again, my mom and I were doing our podcast together. It is called The Revel Podcast. It's gonna be two Tuesdays every month. Link is in the description. So like I was saying earlier today, now it's time to decide what is the next project. 
Obviously another episode will be coming up. We've actually got something pretty cool in the works, which should produce more than one episode, we shall see. But as far as solo videos go, I've got a couple things in mind. First of all, I think I'm going to make just a straight up nature walk video that has no dialogue, it's just ambient sounds, and then just do a 30 minute walk through a park and make it look really nice, 4K60, really good stereo sound. Because there's other channels that do this, and I'll be completely honest, this is just to get views, this is not for a creative output, but people want that stuff, and I think I'm uniquely capable of delivering that to people. I've got the camera know-how, I've got the equipment, I've got the audio know-how and the equipment, I think that needs to be done. Now, along those lines, I was also thinking, I should do a video where it's just my regular solo hiking, but have no music, no dialogue. Would that be interesting? Interesting to watch. I actually don't know. And would I even want to make that? Because the thing that I live for, and I do mean that I live for this, is the marriage of music and visuals. I live for those musical moments where the emotion of the music perfectly builds and then the visuals match it perfectly. It's quite literally what I live for. One of many things, but I do live with it. Now, I would say let me know what you think, but that is going to have zero bearing on whether I actually do it or not. What will have a bearing is whether you guys actually like the video once it's made. If you like the video once it's made, that will affect what I make in the future. But don't worry though, the stuff that we've been making, that's not gonna change because that is what creatively excites me. This stuff is just, it's creatively intriguing to me. I'm like, could this be something cool? I don't know. So I'll have to try and find out. I remember a long time ago, I was listening to this podcast of these YouTubers that I like, and somebody asked them the question, how long do you plan on sticking around with the YouTube channel? And the main guy who started the channel, he was like, I'm in it till the bitter end. I'm going down with the ship. And let me assure you, that is exactly how I feel about Adventure Archives. I am in it till the very end, doing it until my fingers literally are just nubs and I can't do it anymore. There's just an infinite amount of stuff that I can go film out in the world and I wanna see it all and I wanna make videos on all of it. And doing it with the other guys, it's like, it's a dream come true. What a dream come true. Did I bring my wallet? Yes, I did. Okay, I got it. Kingdom Hearts, Melody of Memory. I'm going to enjoy the crap out of this game. Why did I wait? Waiting on a Kingdom Hearts game? Come on, that's, that's a day one buy. Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts, Metal Gear, Zelda, uh, Fumito Ueda, any of those games, day one. Halo, day one. Other stuff you can wait, but come on, don't wait on the stuff that you like the most, man. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, that will do it for today's vlog. Thank you very much for watching. Check out that podcast if you want. If not, just feel free to skip it. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Once again, we are doing the Rebel Podcast. Once again, my mom and I were doing our podcasts together. <clears throat> Once again, we're doing. Once again, my mom and I were doing the podcast together. What do I want to say?